That's true. And you don't really want to have to go for Storm anyway, considering there's already an Ember and a Doom. Ember itself locks you down. Yeah, exactly. Like... It's it just, it's just one of those picks where, you know, it might have been one of their go-tos during the group stages. I think they've picked it, like, at least two or three times. Um, but, yeah, I, I looking at this, they don't have 10th pick either, which means that Empire are going to be able to counterpick whatever mid they actually do take. Um but yeah, it's an interesting position they put themselves in. I don't think they're going to have a hard time starting a fight, so that's fine. All right, so they're going to go with the, the tried and true classic Life Stealer. Pretty good against, I would say, all of these heroes in the sense that it's very hard for Empire to kill him without dooming him. As soon as you pop Rage, you basically get out of every single thing that Empire currently has right now. You still have the use of Surge. You have at least one good infest target and a Spirit Breaker, and then they can go back and uh, decide what they want for their mid. And I believe, yeah, Jug was banned by Windstrike. Yeah. So from a core matchup perspective, assuming that Empire are probably going to be sending this hero mid, this Ember, excuse me, um, what do we got left that plays well into Life Stealer? You can't really do anything like TA because of the Spirit Breaker with Ion Shell. That pretty much just destroys you. Um, I suppose he does have another pick phase before, he has to, or before Empire have to worry about picking uh, their mid hero, so that's actually good for them. Trying to think if there's anything that really stands out. We well, preferably want someone that has range, right, to deal with the Dark Seer, because if you choose an Amelia in, in a lane with uh, Dark Seer plus Spirit Breaker, they could easily just run a try on you and just smash you down with the Grim Stroke and the Spirit Breaker together. Yeah, and there's also the issue of, uh, like you mentioned, just not a lot of reach. Like, Ember is, is a hero that can go in. Um, <sighs> but again, he's very non committal, right? Like, he, he can choose if he wants to be in or out, and then the other heroes, like Doom's going to need a Blink Dagger, or Willow's going to need you know, whatever Yules or whatever item she decides to go for to really be able to fight. So I am looking for something else. Um, they can go one of two paths, right? They can either go for the, the hard carry type hero that's just going to match up really well against the life stealer. So like your Medusa, for example. Like I'm just looking at Medusa and going, holy crap, this is an insanely good Medusa game. Um, and then for Windstrike, they, uh, they need kind of the same, right? They need another hero that can either go in. But I would prefer if Windstrike goes for a hero that is actually more aggressive just because i don't think that life stealer like playing a single core obviously into empire is not going to feel too good against doom but I, I do think they have the potential to to win the lanes themselves like you mentioned well there was a queen of pain banned by team empire understandable obviously ember versus queen of pain doesn't usually go too well for ember especially with the move towards slight of fist Ooh, and man. flame guard being okay. maxed out first but yeah okay am wasn't something we really discussed i feel like it's something we rarely see but it's funny that Windstrike are the ones to ban that, seeing as Kuman is the type of guy that has played that a lot in the past. Yeah, he has a a pretty interesting hero pool, actually. He plays like the Storms, the Queens, the Anti-Mages, Bloodseekers, like all these OD, like a lot of the bands actually uh, from Empire were targeted at him, so. Yeah, I mean, right, he's... Poison here. Well, I was going to say, he's very innovative with his builds as well. I remember back when Aquila was still in the game, rest in peace to that now, he used to do double Aquila Anti-Mage which seemed stupid at the time, but it gave this kind of aggressive ramp up that anti-mage players weren't really doing at the time. Yeah. I mean, Dota is just such a... There's the Dusa. Okay, so Dusa from both sides. Um, I was thinking it more for Empire, Yeah, but I think that Medusa is still good for the same reasons for Windstrike. Is it kind of greedy, though? Because you've got Lifesteal as well, right? The guy that usually likes to go Midas Radiant. I think they're probably just going to go some like armlet build or something on a life stealer to cuz in this type of situation you're essentially a four protect one. You're going to your life stealer is going to have a pretty solid lane no matter where he goes. Like I can't see them picking anything that I'm really scared of if I'm life stealer cuz if they pick something like Ursa then you just, you know, turtle and win the game. So, okay. Slark kind of the same concept, another melee hero that matches up well against life stealer. Uh, the difference between Slark and Ursa in this type of situation is that he is much more mobile. And he doesn't suffer from getting kited nearly uh, as much until things like Force Staff actually come out, which is when it can be a little bit annoying for him. But it's pretty difficult to kill Slark uh, from Empire, or sorry, from, from Windstrike. So I do like the pick. Um, now there's actually a legitimate threat to the Medusa and the Life Stealer because the way that these fights typically go is that you're going to have so much AoE spread damage on Empire through the Fatal Bonds, you know, Willow spells, Rock, and the Ember. Is that your supports are, are pretty much going to be like dying all the time, right? And then when Life Stealer and Medusa are the only two heroes left, what can end up happening is they just they can't kill Slark because he's too mobile. So I think that Windstrike are actually 
they're pretty dependent on winning their lanes this game because I think that Slark has the potential to just be that hero that just never dies. Uh, whereas, you know, you get a Doom off on the Lifestealer, the Medusa, and they, they can still die. So I, I think that win strike, even though they have the Medusa, I feel like I would prefer for them to, to push the pace. Definitely a fair point to make. I guess the way to look at that as well is uh, you mentioned with this Ember Spirit pickup, it's that type of hero that's non kill He can just poke and prod and, and Slark plays into that style as well, right? It's kind of an attritional battle. Yeah. I'll go in, I'll poke, I'll jump out, I'll come back again. Unless you can burn through my mana, I'm going to keep doing this. And while they do have the Medusa with the Snake, they don't have a natural Diffusal Builder on their team on the side of Windstrike. Like, you can go on Medusa, but it's not really something you want to necessarily be dipping into. You want to go for, like, the Manta, the Scardi, or maybe a, a crit build is the alternative. Yeah, I'm curious, actually, to see how this Medusa is going to itemize. Because personally, I, I've played a fair amount of Medusa, and Scotty feels really bad. Because <laughs> they nerf the slow, right? So now yes. you attack people, and they still just walk away from you. And that was one of the big selling points of Medusa before, is that even when you were going an item like Scotty, it made you super tanky, and you could just you could kite them and just you know run around and chase them to death and things like that. You can't really do the same thing anymore, so we'll see if he still uh, decides to go for it. She was definitely and one of the biggest sufferers, right? Because like there was a change yeah. towards melee carries really being the uh, desired carries for it to deal with ranged carries. Yeah. I forgot I have to start every single game by muting the players because they just spam that <laughs> wheel and I, can I cannot hear anything. Everyone always asks me, it's like, why do you have all these pro players muted? It's because of the chat wheel. Like, that's it. Some of them because I talk to you, but mostly the chat wheels. Mostly the chat wheel, yeah. I remember doing like replay analysis of uh, TIA games and LGD and, and OG just lay on their chat wheel. And I'm like, this is obnoxious, it's gotta stop. It's just, it's gotta stop. So, it's, yeah. it's kind of like our own form of smack talk, Greg. Like if you ever watch some like uh, the Call of Duty leagues, like after the games, like screaming at each other, saying, yeah, yeah, we be, what up? You don't get that in Dota. It's like very calm, it's handshake. So we just scream at each other with, uh, the chat lines in game. I'm perfectly okay with like the the drama and the smack talk and stuff. Just not when I'm when I can't hear my own thoughts. You know, like I need to be able to focus. So, all right, looks like a three bot here from Windstrike, and probably just going to be a two for two. So nothing crazy. I guess the logic is you, you think about Empire's off lane by about level three, life stealer kind of self sustains. Whereas you don't really want a Slark to have an easy lane here. So if you just pressure him out and make sure he doesn't get a quick Midas, is there really anything you're scared of on the side of Empire? I mean, not that... Uh, I mean, bottom is the lane I'm scared of. I'm not scared of top, like, for the the reasons that you mentioned. Like, even the Life Stealer, he's not really going to be harassed out of lane. At the same time, you're not really too worried uh, about dying either, even with the Grimstruck TPing. So no fear is going to be joining Silence up here. And it'll just be a Classic 2 on 2. So that that's actually really good for for the Slark. Because if it's like tri lane pressure and stuff, he's gonna have a much harder time farming. And I I can only assume that both these heroes on the the one position are just gonna be trading. And I guess the logic is it's a dark seer, you know, we could go aggressive with him, but just let him get his levels like he is now. Once you get Spirit Break to like level two, you give him an iron shell, he can start to rotate and do things in different lanes. Or just get back yeah. in this lane until someone dies. I, I don't think he'll soak from the DS too much after two. At least I would hope not. Because Darkseer is one of those heroes where if you, you do get him off to that great start, he gets the early, you know, Arcane's Max Soul Ring, whatever build, Helm of the Dominator. The pressure that he can put on in the early game is tremendous. And the, the amount of commitment that it's going to take from Empire to get him out of their side of the map once he's like level five, six, seven, it's going to be a lot, right? So that's that's something that you can look to um, if you're Windstrike and be like, okay, Lil is just going to be able to create a lot of space, assuming that non grata doesn't just you know exp goblin him the entire early game first shot on top lane Ooh. a little bit of aggression Going coming out say you could get pretty low has the bramble mace to work with we'll get the root out on the life stealer so back away in time they did actually force the scorch stuff out of maiden as well yeah i was surprised that he actually started with the brambles i'm not much of a willow player myself so whenever i see him i'm always interested you know in like what they do because i think the hero has a lot of potential but i just suck at it so <laughs> i'm just uh i'm always intrigued by the choices and we haven't really talked a whole lot about mid uh I, this this lane for me is more of a wash but i think that it might be more important in this lane that uh, that the Ember oh. does well. And speaking of, it's uh, like first blood is actually going to happen in the top lane. Yeah, we and look away for you know, a second. You don't expect to go down, was, uh, It was yeah, on cooldown. 
I mean, I'm not surprised he took the early point in Scorched Earth, right? Because it's been kind of a shift with the changed Infernal Blade. Scorched Earth looks a bit more desirable compared to how it used to be. But, you know, and it's also, I think it's a little bit more spammable because it used to be you needed it to heal up, right? But when they shifted the regen across the Devour, that gave you a little bit more flexibility. Still not enough to live. Yeah, I think it's just stability that the Scorched Earth really offers you. And in this lane, it's a range support, so it's really hard to, like, reliably get Infernal Blades. So if he does end up going for, like, two or three points in a Scorched, I wouldn't be too surprised. Uh, but one of the main reasons he actually can still go down in this lane, even though it's not, like, a really high likelihood, is just because Doom's base armor is terrible. It's it's one at level two, and uh, Life Sealer does lots of physical damage. It's true, and that's another reason why you don't necessarily want to take the Infernal Blade, is Life Sealer can sustain off your, uh, your engagement in space. Yeah, he just hits you and pops Rage and then removes the Infernal Blade and then you're like, oh, right. This matchup is actually not that good until 6. Meanwhile, mid, still pretty even here. Kodos has definitely had to burn a lot more in regen, but you kind of expect that in a range versus melee matchup of this type. And occasionally, yeah, but... with the new Flame Guard, Mortley likes to roleplay as the Medusa. That's a really weird I really one. like how Kuman's actually saving his points. A lot of the time, sometimes, well... Some people like to get the early points in a split shot to just push out the wave and start stacking early. He's kind of prioritizing uh, keeping the lane equilibrium. Oh, they're going in. There's no equilibrium here. There's just forced pressure around the dream. He has to turn around to attack Non Grata. But can you do it quick enough? No, you can't. Non Grata gets the kill, stays alive as well. And King R needs to be careful. They do have a charge. Still taking damage. They actually do have a charge here. They could try and re engage. Especially if King R comes too far wait. out. If the Fatal Bonds wears off, he's going to salve and charge him. There it is. Vision. No, he's going to go nope, for TP away. It was taking a little bit too long, but King R didn't realize just how close he was to making a grave error there. Yeah, that's those one of those situations where you just start panicking as being go, please stop getting hit, please stop getting hit. I'm fatal bonds. I have like 10 HP. He's just sitting there with a the tango on, just hoping that it doesn't go down. But yeah, big kill. Uh, taking down the safe liner. And just looking at the, the farm and stuff, this is kind of what we were expecting. The Slark is still getting a lot of farm. Life Sealer is actually getting pressured a bit more. Oh, that's actually pressure in Slark again. Yeah. If he's not careful, he can go down here. One Bash comes out. He actually needs to pounce away from this. But nope, they get in front of him. And it looks like Dream might go down again. The Charge Rune is dead. And he just TP'd out. Has him cooled down for 30 seconds. And King R, well, his life is going to be a cooldown for a little bit here. As he will also go down. The Shrine was already used. And he was nowhere nearby. The second death is big. The second death without the TP back to lane is really, really rough if you're the Slark. So that basically just completely equalizes the two cores. Now Silent's going to be able to farm a bit, and, you know, Dream's going to have to run back to his lane, which is uh, very, very unfortunate. But, you know, as much as I thought this SB wasn't going to soak too much from Lil, he's actually just full-on taking, like, all of the ESP. So... Yeah. He's going to have a very early level 6, which is still pretty good because that just means whoever he charges during, like, you know, the 10 to 12 minute mark is pretty much going to die unless it's, like, Ember. See, this was the part that I was, like, I was looking at. I wasn't sure if they were just flexing roles or not because Lil is obviously usually the 4, right? And Spirit Breaker is, yeah. is the 3. So maybe they are actually giving that priority over to Spirit Breaker as the, the offlaner here. And then yeah, they I just mean, if they're go only, farm jungle. If their only goal was to enable the Spirit Breaker, then that makes a lot of sense. Because Ion Shell and Surge are, are two of the best things in the world for a Spirit Breaker. And That's he's gonna, gonna go in again. Yep, King Swell's here this time as well. Dream has to pounce further away from his tower. If he gets bashed once, he could go down. The Cursed Crown being charged up onto non to stop him. He did actually use the Bulldoze though, so it won't last very long. The Brown Mace does come out and say you have to back away. But with the Fail Bonds here, you'll notice the Spirit Breaker doesn't feel so tanky. Yeah, only one point in the bulldoze, so not enough status resistance to be able to just, you know, ram his face into the tower. We'll see a bit of that later, I'm sure. They're, uh, it's a really good reaction from Empire to just have the, the Warlock and the Willow down here just waiting. Kind of understanding the movement and just saying, okay, they just want to hard pressure this Slark because th this hero really cannot defend himself, right? And I wouldn't say that Empire supports are particularly good at stopping dives either until at least level 6, right? Because then you have Terrorize and you have Golem then tower diving becomes a lot more scary. So I think Windstriker is trying to, you know, create as much pressure as they can before those little sixes on the supports hit. I guess the other way to look at it as well is even if you then can't kill Dream, you're actually kind of already still winning by the fact he has to have two heroes down here because Slark is a hero that doesn't really like to share his early XP. 
And yeah, and he also isn't hitting creeps. Like he he's doing a, a large camp hole right now because that is his only option. Like he can't walk up. I mean, to his credit though, he has got 39 CS on the board already, so he's not doing absolutely abysmally. It's not like he's been shot. Well, out it's yet. just the it's the nature of the hero. It's not really his fault. Like that's that's just kind of how it goes. You know, you're playing a slark. You got brown boots and a glove of haste. You're waiting for your Midas. You're at the mercy of what the enemy team wants to do and your supports at this stage. Like Medusa's already started to supplement her farm doing her own stacks because there's no supports available to do it for her. That's kind of something we don't really see much anymore is supports that actually go and stack camps. Oh, Judge. Straightforward on a dream. A lot of damage straight away due to the surge. It's like pretty low. They're going to force a TP from Doom and just back away. He will cancel it. But now they know Doom can't show up anywhere else in the map. They might try and pressure on these supports next. Uh, they're going to kill a life stealer. This is a nice rotation. He's playing completely blind. He has no words. It's going to be a doom, a doom into a remnant into a kill. Yep. The TP's coming up right now, though. They Triple might be quick TP. enough. The rainbow TP begins. Silent comes out onto Ember. He needs to chase on through with a remnant. Non grata looking to charge, but can't get across quick enough. Life stealer getting pretty low. The final remnant through will get him. The charge goes on to Ember. He has no remnants left. Can they do enough here? They need to get another bash. Never strike. They're just bashing back towards them. The double iron shell out. They're trying to slow us down. Nice. Use the tier and chains, but slowed down by the Sorica fake. Kodos getting pretty low here. Activates the flame guard, trying to move away. The curse ground out. The non grata doesn't have the bulldoze. Has to charge across on the doom and look to back away because he himself might go down. The root comes out. The bramble mace, fly a fist, runs into the second root and dies. They have to back away because Windstrike realized we're pretty low. They might even start to dive towers if we do anything else. Now, that was such a nice move from. Uh from Empire, because not only did they kill the Life Stealer, but they didn't lose anyone. They got an additional kill, and they pulled everyone from Windstrike off the bottom side of the map. And they're gonna kill more. And they're gonna get another kill. Yep, no fear. Stuck his head out, and they lobbed it right off. The stun comes down to Ember, but there's not enough damage on Silent. He realizes and backs away. There is a charge out, though, and they have got little positions, so he could surge as they drive by with Non Grata. I think this is a really good example of some kind of questionable warding coming up from Windstrike. Like, I don't necessarily agree with the double warding from it. Like, I understand that Kuman. Oh, hold that thought. I don't know if they can get him. He's still got a remnant to work with. This is just overly ambitious. It feels like Windstrike, they've drafted the Spirit Breaker, and they've kind of taken this idea of we always have to fight a little bit too far now. Well, I don't disagree with them wanting to fight. Nice rune steal there from Kodos himself out of there so it's gonna be a four for zero that's a mega ouch if you're win strike this is they're, they're putting all their eggs into the Kuman basket and like i mentioned the double ward mid if you just had one lane ward that would have completely prevented what happened to the life stealer you could also say that maybe he shouldn't have been showing when he knows the doom is six and the ember is missing but i think having one ward topside wouldn't be too bad because it's really hard to commit to kill the do so He's still very, very tanky. He's got the Mana Shield if he wants to turn it on. Triple Wraith Band Phase, level 11. I think it's actually harder to kill him right now than it is to kill uh, to kill Silent. That's a fair statement. And it feels like right now, you know, if you're Empire, you're kind of happy with forcing all his attention to top. He's just left Slark alone in the bot lane. And all of a sudden, with the Midas online, he's just starting to climb his way up that net worth chart. Yeah, this Slark is going to go from having, like, the, the worst early game of his life in terms of lane pressure to a completely free game. As if he gets to like, you know, two or three items, the, the complexion of this is going to change dramatically. And I wouldn't say that Medusa um, has a horrible matchup against Slark. If you can hit him with a snake, that's what you have to do in fights. If you don't hit the Slark with snake and he's able to spam Dark Pact and like pounce in and out, it's a nightmare. So we'll have to keep an eye on that during the mid game fight, especially once Medusa hits 15. Smoke rotation, non grata found. We'll look to move away. They're holding the rock. They don't want to commit it onto him. Non-Grata needs to escape this. We'll charge away now, but the Curse Ground's going to stun him up. Not too far away. Kodos will move in with the Remnant to clean up the kill. It'll take a while because this is a beefy boy, but there's no way he escapes alive. Hey, it's pretty strong, but not strong enough. So Kodos on the killing spree. Double Wraith into Maelstrom. I wonder what Ember players' thought process is in going like multiple Wraiths as opposed to drums. Because I know that Kodos wants to fight. For the same reason you know, that, that Windstrike are pretty much playing all around their news. They're just trying to create space, you know? Is but it, I wonder what, like, the cutoff is. Yeah, I wonder if it's kind of like this this idea of how quickly you need to apply pressure, right? Because Drums has a bit of a slower build-up. You do get some stat items along the way, but Wraith Bands just feel more instantaneous. And top lane. Go in. This is a very dead dude. It's just a clean-cut kill for them. I mean, he's still farming pretty yeah. well, so he's a valuable kill for them. He's second on the net worth chart. Yeah, those type of deaths are, are pretty painful um, in the sense that 
you didn't really force anything, right? Like Windstrike were just kind of already chilling there. You didn't make them TP. You kind of just died in lane. So even though Dream gets a, like a wave or two to himself, I wouldn't say that that was a very good death uh, coming in there from, from Maiden. But charge, um, but I think Windstrike are just trying to get back towards that side of the map. They are going to find no fear. How hard do they want to go for this one? Well, they're going to move up now under the tower. He's turning around with Inks. Well, he's pretty committed, committed to his own death. Silent will just back away. Kodos is going to chase, though. No see in chains for 10 seconds. He needs to be careful. The open wound's out on him. He does have the haste to work with. He's trying to kite him out, but the charge comes in straight away on the Willow and say he was gone. Now you need to get out. They drop the rock. This is heavy commitment. They so badly want this kill in the Silent. But Kodos is going to run out the haste soon. Non grata just infests up with life still inside him. And they'll look to back away on the side of Empire. It looks like it'll be a clean escape, though, because, of course, on the side of Windstrike, you got a Medusa. It's not exactly your Ember Spirit. It's not exactly this hero that punishes those sort of aggressive moves. Yeah, that was an interesting commitment to the rock there. I'm surprised King R even dropped it. That was optimistic, I would say, at best. Not really going back in here on top. Yep, they're going for him here. He's trying to purge it off, but doesn't get rid of that mischievous little thing on top of him. Now the Soulbind, look at him together. Make sure he can't escape with the Shadow Dance. They might look to re-engage in a moment, but the Curse Crown coming out to non -Grata. Doesn't have the Bulldoze to work with, has to charge away towards the creep. Gets in the tree line, they're gonna use the Terrorize, but they hold on to it in the end. As they realize there's no really hard commitment coming out from Empire. They can't really get on top of that kill and look for it. And it's kind of funny to watch your Spirit Breaker be this much of a priority to kill in these early fights. I mean, he's the one who commits. So he's usually the one who gets targeted first. It's kind of like the Clockwork effect or the Tusk effect, where your hero just, we talked about Ember being non-committal. Those types of heroes are nothing but commitment. They just go in and they, most of the time, they leave in a body bag. Like, like that's how the hero is. Yeah, He's not much. been leaving them too many body bags so far. Never Strike comes out. Kodos can escape quick enough, but nope, no bash coming out. He'll move away on the Remnant. I'm surprised he committed the Never Strike still once the Remnant got thrown out. Especially when Maiden would have been an easy kill for them there. The yeah, I mean, it's, it's a 100 second cooldown. It's not the shortest in the world, but at the same time, you know, you're, you're just buying space. Kuman is still just farming up a storm. He's almost got Manta, Triple Wraith phase at 15 minutes. He has got 168 crit kills, so he's rocking like 11, almost 12 CS a minute. It's pretty pretty good. Non Grata, that was... I mean, he's got two points to the Bulldoze now. He kind of gets away with these moves all the time. He was just trying to probe about runes, and it looks like there'll be free going the way of Empire. His only lifestealer was top. Take one up there. So 10 minutes, they got all four, and then 15 minutes, they got three, which means... I mean, it's it's really good for them. They are losing out in the net worth battle, but that's pretty much entirely the Medusa. Yeah. And Kuman has not yet walked to fights. Um, with the Manta, he has the capability of going because he can get himself out of the Brambles now. He can he can get rid of the Fatal Bonds and the Searing Chains as well. So Manta is actually pretty solid this game. A lot of the time, I, I don't like it when Medusas just go full Manta straight away, but I would say there's actually enough to dispel with that that it's, it's actually a worthwhile pickup here. They're going again. Oh, he's, he's so on his fast. way in. Non Grata going straight forward on a dream. We'll get away though. The dark pack was activated. They couldn't see another target and never strike with some cooldown for 15 seconds. But I honestly, I'd want some stats on how much of this game has been spent charging by Non Grata. He's increasing those stats again. Just passing on through. Doesn't want Kodos. He's targeting top. They should Nothing ping out. Let you know though. He got bashed by Roche. Oh, oh no. I'm not. I hate this. Roche reacts way too fast to that move. Yeah, that was a really interesting series of events, though, because if you look at what just happened, like, no one on the side of Windstrike was really showing in lane. Kuman was farming his triangle, like, an ancient camp and stuff. There was a charge across the lane. They're not defending top, and they just lost their tier 1 mid to a solo Ember Spirit. And it's not even like they didn't have vision there. They have wards. Charge through. Bashes the Ember on the way past again. He's really committed just for Dream every time. Going towards slot, but there's the Curse Crown coming out. They might turn around onto him. Doesn't have the bulldoze available right now. They'll throw out the Bramble Maces, they'll poke and they'll prod. And then they'll look to jump around top from Non Grata, Ruid up again. Needs to escape, has got the charge, but where's he gonna go? On his way past the Warlock, says see you later. They throw out the Doom onto him, so they can actually hit up the Shrine to heal him up. They don't even have to deny him off. That was a peculiar choice by Maiden there. Maybe he thought yeah. that Doom cancelled the charge? It's the only thing I can think of. Uh, I don't I don't think he thought that. I think he was just hoping that... Um, well, no, they have a word. They need to try most stuff. Yeah, that was just really weird. Look, I want to be honest with you. The last five minutes of this game has been pretty <laughs> wild in terms of, like, what's actually happening. This is a I, I've never... 
I've never seen a Medusa Dream? lose her mid tower oh, for so long. Oh, the rock! Just in time, Shadow Dance came out as well, so we had to back away. Can they actually get anything off this? non karate getting pretty low because of the failed bonds. And Kuma has finally shown up to a lane to say hello to people. But he's going to go straight back to farming creeps. Yeah, that's fine. I also love the choice. I really hope he picks up this Maelstrom instead of just going straight Scotty. We are... There, sometimes... I was go just going to say, we, we, we talked about this in the draft, about the greed of the Medusa. And I want to pull away from the Medusa because I want to talk about Lifesteal for a second. Because he is going for that Radiance build after the Midas. Okay. Do, do you, right. How do you feel about this? Is this just Windstrike saying we've got enough aggression from Spirit Breaker, we can buy the time? Or do you feel it's a little bit too greedy? I think if he can get to it, and then there's another item on top of that, they have a very strong 5-man. I think that's the benefit of the Radiance, and it kind of always is on Lifestealer, is that you are prone to getting kited. And his job in this game, more or less, is to kill the supports. Like, he's not a good matchup against either core. Slark and Ember are both very mobile, so they have a tendency to not really get hit by him too much. And that, in that sense, the Radiance is actually even better. Because you just run around the fight, and you're either killing supports, or you're getting cut. Wow, okay. Power uh, outage. Power outage, internet outage, or something like that. No, this, that's okay, no, 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 no. This... You're wrong. You're wrong, Graskill. This is the step up, all right? You saw what Gambit done yesterday, all right? This, okay. is, this is the whole team going before anyone can even type GG. Oh, God. I think I know they changed it a decent amount. Yeah, it's just a bash radius in the cast range by the looks of it. Okay. Okay. I mean, it's still like an AoE Nether Strike isn't the worst thing. It's just typically the hero has a lot of other stuff that he wants yeah. um, before, we, uh, before we get to that point. So. I think it's just the deceptive the wording is... on it. Oh, going in again. Non Grada, he's just keeping us on our toes. You know what was like cool? He was like, all right, Drask. I know you've uh, I know you've been chilling stream for a while. You haven't been like casting months and months in a row recently. I'm gonna make it easy on you. I'm gonna I'm gonna work pigeon into the ground. You can just lay That's good though. <laughs> if you have a spirit breaker on your team and he's not doing this, you got a problem. That's what you want out of your spirit breaker. The guy's iron shelled like eighty percent of the game. Just get in there. You know? I, I like how scenario. I like how hard you work, you know. I thought you were gonna go, that's what you want though. You know, I still get paid the same no matter how much you talk. But no, you, you made a valid point, and he's going to make a valid point into main space up top. Charging deep here. The TPs are coming in. They need to make quick, but the Doom comes out the life stealer. Never strike prone out. Soulbind. Only link into one, but finally links onto the second one. Just as Grimstroke dies with it, and now non grata. He's stuck here. No bulldoze for seven seconds, and by that seventh second, he's already dead. <laughs> is All right, it good? Well. <laughs> is it good, though, Draskal? I don't know if that particular move was what I would call good. Um... I mean, again, Kuman is still farming, but at what point does the farm start to become a little bit detrimental? They're going to go for a rune trade here. Looks like another 3 for 1 favoring Empire. They are just on the bounty rune game. Yeah, Kuman tried to get on top of it and get it that time. They did force the Shadow Dance out of Dream, but it's not the biggest cooldown. So here's my my one, I guess, gripe about what Windstrike are doing right now, is that every single time I see them take an engagement, they're doing it with no vision. Like, they, they have a ton of wards down, and they're good wards. Like you can see mid, you have an aggro ward in the, the Radiant jungle right now. The Empire don't even know is there. You're going to see another charge from non just making sure nothing's coming from this snake. I mean, that time, that time he did it around the wards, and they actually are going for an objective this time. An important one. standing there. That's good. I like that. Finally. Charge on the Kodos. Vacuum back. He's nice. done right now. He's being charged up the stance, and he's gone. You know what? That blank dagger just killed that Ember. I already paid for itself. Bam. I mean, we said you have to be careful as a glass cannon this type of game, and uh, Kodos being a little bit overconfident. And he's not even going for something like a Lincoln's or a BKB. He's going for the Death next, and there's charge coming in straight away into Warlock. They get one bash here, they kill him off, but they can't. So they'll back off with the tier two taken. Finally, some towers on the board, more than just the tier one bot for Windstrike. Yeah, this is a very, very strong timing. Uh, this is the part of the game where Empire really needs to make sure they can get all their ducks in a row for a fight. Like, you need the Willow spells and the Warlock spells to synergize because if they, on win strike, if they get that five man together and you don't hit the Fatal Bonds into the Chaotic Offering just on point, there's a very good chance you just get run over in the fight. You've got the Medusa, level 18. She's got the Mana Snake talent. She's got the, the Maelstrom, Manta, and now a Force Staff. So the Slark is not going to be as big of a concern for her as it was just a couple of minutes ago. And the five man potential from Wind Strike is still very, very good. So Empire needs to to make sure that if they're looking to take like a, a full on engagement, that the, the supports are very, very good at pushing their buttons in the fight. 
That is a fair point because when you think about Empire's lineup this stage, it's not just the supports they're reliant on. They're heavily reliant on the Ember, right? Because while Doom can invalidate a target and Slark can poke and prod at one, you feel like Empire, when they go on, they need this instant reward, right? They need to just splash someone down off the back of like the Fatal Bonds and the Flame Guard and the Slight Fist. Yeah. I mean, they can Doom the Medusa and just kind of run at them. That's what yeah, they're going to do. Gonna do that. Lil's here. Gets the Surge out. He's going to bodyguard. The whole line's going to be thrown down with the wall as well. Uh, oh. oh, my. You know, I, I, I feel like they just missed out because of lag there. Because you saw that move, right? There was no Searing Chains coming out from Kodos on the Doomed Medusa. Oh, yeah. boy. Message me was, uh, what time is it right now? So it's 4 a.m. my time. So he messaged me seven hours ago. And he's like, hey, can you cover this game? And I'm like, oh. All right, here oh, you're go. gonna get to cover right now. They actually are gonna commit. The charge coming through, gonna connect on the two heroes right now. Trying to retreat. They have a strike on the King Eye. Still got the Golem, but he can't get out quite just yet. Terrorize to scare one away. There's used to Medusa Stone Gaze. The Golem does get dropped right now. King Eye still alive and retreating, but chased down by Silent. Silent moving into Kodos to force him away with Remnant. And the Gaze forces them all back. The charge trying to commit through. Decides to cancel it out because he's pretty low on HP. Now Silent needs to retreat with the surge. He can get out. The Searing Chains connects on the Dark Searing Lifesteal. They're going to chase him with a buyback on Warlock. They'll find one. They'll look for a second one. Silent gets pretty low. Remnant in, but Infest against Kuman to escape. Kuman has got the TP to work with, but Kodos has the Searing Chains. He's going to be forced to fight here. Stone Gate's already having been used. Four stuff away. Nice charge. Non Grada covering their escape says, Go! Get out! I give my life for the course. In both forms of the word. No, still chase, but Kodos doesn't have the mana for another lockdown. So Kuman will make it to the tower and to safety with a cowering lifesteal inside him saying, please protect me. Yeah, that, that mana snake actually just owns them so hard. If he didn't get the, the snake off on the Doom, he gets an Infernal Blade. If he didn't hit it on the Ember, he gets another Searing Chains and there's a good chance that he ends up going down because his mana and his force are still on cooldown. So yeah, that fight... That's what happens when, you know, Empire are able to get all their spells correctly lined up. The the heroes that aren't the Medusa and the Lifestealer just die. If you don't have a way to deal with Fatal Bonds, you're dying from residual damage, you're getting hit by the, the Slight of Fist, the Maelstrom procs, and, you know, worst case scenario, you're being ran at by a, by a Slark. And heroes like Grimstroke, when they don't have any items to support, uh, like, their own life, there's no Force, there's no uh, Ghost Scepter, or anything like that, they, they just... They don't get to do much, you know? So they have to stand very far away and go, please, God, please don't kill my course. <laughs> like, just keep them alive. Keep them in front of me for as long as we can. Golf is a tricky one. Some people are good putters. Some people are good drivers. And we're going to drive on with this game. This is finally ready to get underway. All right. Good segue. I like yeah, that. You know, you just got, you got to go with the flow. Um, but apparently, Empire lack a flow of internet to the PCs at this point. So we have to do a lot of it. Don't oh, worry, dude, guys. I feel we're getting warmed so up. So much time in my day. Yeah, we're just getting warmed up. You know, next th next time we're gonna be on bail bonds and stocks. Uh, we're gonna shift from area to area. We're we'll talking about <laughs> politics if this goes three hours, because you know that's gotta be the oh, last thing you pull out. I have a strict no uh, politics <laughs> policy. Thank God. You you never know what you're gonna talk about when you're four hours into a pause, Draskal. Okay. No, that's that's incredibly fair. I I just always like. You know, I've been, I haven't been casting a lot recently, obviously, but when I used to cast all the time, we had to fill ridiculous amounts of time. Oh, I love filling. And, it's great. <laughs> yeah, and it, you just kind of learn, you know, it's like, it, people are like, why are you talking about this, blah, blah, blah. There's really only so many things you can theorize about the game. Yeah, when you arrive at cosmetics just... for like 20 minutes, you know you're basically at the edge of running out of dirt to talk about at that moment. Jump in, oh, Kodos, stunned goodness. up. Nope, they cancel it. They can actually get out quick enough to slide a fist, saves the life of Kodos, but he's still being chased down. Pretty low, but we'll get away. That was a little bit too close for comfort. I can't tell if he single canceled his ulti or if he ran into a bramble. It looked like was this a slight of fist? There was a very slight slight of fist. I think it hit one person. Yeah, that, that could have been it as well. But he definitely can't it got cancelled by something. Alright. Now he's trying to walk it off. It's hunting time. Dream might want to think twice about this though. There's an encirclement coming in. Silent surging forward. They do see King Art. They get rid of him first. That's perfect. No fatal bond spread. And they back him up on the high ground. How you doing up there, buddy? You can see the whole world for just a moment before you go to your grave. Just for the record, he did not need his blink dagger for that vacuum. <laughs> so we're one and one right now. One good vacuum with the blink. One that was unnecessary. I mean, they could have left him there. It wouldn't have been that great, but they could have left him there. He did have TP on cooldown. Actually, I think that was from trying to TP up. Did he really try and TP when he was up there? All right. 
brave man. I mean, you don't have any other choice, so you might as well try. Oh, jump in. Silent gets hit up by the Doom. They don't hit the chase. Oh, no, they do actually. He's held here. Charge coming in. He's actually baiting them in. Now, no grunt the Never Strike. Remnants try and bounce across, but Life Stealer will escape. They're looking the wrong way. They don't have the mana to pursue this any further with the Surge. He'll be able to get away from the Bedlam, but the foul shot comes out. Yes! Seiyu seals his fate with the Shadow Realm. They all. Man, that was. It was, that was so close. a really sick save. The ward actually on the high ground there got him that kill because it's nighttime right now. If they didn't have that ward, they wouldn't have had vision for the uh, the Willow Shadow Realm. So the MVP is away. the guy that was dead, basically. Yeah, the MVP is the guy who got backed onto a cliff and tried to TP out in front of five heroes. That's your MVP. Wow. It doesn't sound good when you say it like that. But he is context. the true MVP. Yeah, context is important, as he's proving. So far, win strike. I mean, it was a cute play, right? Because the life stealer just starts attacking him, doesn't even try and run away. Like, okay, what's going on here? And you know, Nongrado's trying to be the savior. That was kind of a show of how they can take these fights when the whole team shows up, which has been time and time again. But half the time, it's usually just like Spirit Breaker plus one, right? And they just end up losing the fights. Yeah, it's kind of a. It's one of those things where you know that as a team, they're talking amongst themselves and they're like, all right, you know, Kuman says I need this item or, you know, let's wait until my ult's back up or something like that. And then they play around what he wants to do because he's the centerpiece of the team, right? Like he's playing Medusa. He's the guy who decides when I feel strong enough, you guys are going to walk with me somewhere and we're going to take an objective. Another charge. Oh, my. Oh, what? Look God. away for a moment. Now the Never Strike on the King Ars, the next target. He does have the golem. They want to try and force it out, but nope. Trying to retreat. Here in chains comes out. The buyback was forced out of Willow. Nongra is probably going to die for this. He's got a charge. Look at that slow escape. The golem even dropped. They wow. hate this Spirit Breaker. Got that was actually such a worthwhile death. Kumin, he's gone. The DD oh, no. was still active on Slark and now we'll find a secondary kill. The Yules comes out. And No Fear has many things to fear in this game. Okay, now it's... Okay, Nongra's death was still, in my opinion, very okay. The rest of what just happened to Winstrike... Definitely not okay. And this is not okay for Windstrike either. They were in the pit. They saw the opportunity. A dream. That that DD was running out. He pounced at the perfect time. That was the only way he was ever going to kill that Medusa. Wow. I can't believe it. I didn't see exactly how the fight started. I would love to see like a, a replay of what like what transpired because we saw what was happening mid. Obviously, we saw the golem get dropped. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't personally watching the fight to the shrine until after he was like already pretty much dead. Nope, same. Uh, it, I'm in agreement. I would have loved to see that, but sadly, we don't have that sort of money for our production. Uh, we get one fight at a time. Okay, there's a, there's a limit here. Yeah, I, I we'll saw the DD uh... bot. Right, like I saw him the DD bot is like. Okay, just a DD. He won't ever do anything with it. I just have so many questions. Like, he has a, a Manta and a Force or a Hurricane Pike on the Medusa. So how in the world did he not get his ult off? Yeah, because I, I mean, he got hit by Terrorize eventually, right? But that was after the initial bout. Yeah, it could have just been like a perfect chain stun, I guess, from the Willow. Quite possibly. Like, if he just hits the Bramble Maze at the right area in, this, uh, in these stairs, you spend like double the time trying to get around. Well, now I would say that even though the game is very close in terms of like net worth, I would say that Empire have a, a pretty significant advantage because they have basically direct answers to both cores on the side of Windstrike. So you doom the Medusa pretty much exclusively. I think if you doom anyone else, you're basically just making a mistake. And then the Slark can just run at the Medusa. And then the, the supports on Windstrike go, uh, wait a minute here. Our team fight contribution isn't really anywhere near as good as a Warlock or a Willow. And our cores are pretty much hard counterpicked. So, I don't know. I don't know about this one for Windstrike. I mean, obviously anything is possible. There could be an engagement that Windstrike take that Empire aren't ready for. A lot of it's going to also be based on vision and, you know, what engagements they can find. But just on paper, I'm, like, really leaning towards Empire. Well, Windstrike are going to try and, and pivot you the other way here. They're near the runes. They are smoked up. Nongra has the Infest Bomb ready. Doesn't realize how many heroes he's hitting into. The only one who's not here is Dark Willow. They could maybe take a charge in on the Dream. Get Start Pack to purge it off. Now the Never Strike charged up. Pushes him back after using the Pounce. Now the Infest Bomb out. Gets him low enough to pop the Aegis straight away. And Maiden just dropping in. Just trying to do what he can. Steam Swell just pop out on him. The Doom's already on Medusa. She full retreats. Soulbind comes out. Slow him down. Kodos charge it forward. Searing Chains comes out. Wall is down, but it won't protect him. Maybe the Medusa can with the right clicks coming out. Forces them away. Lil's going to survive. Dream's BKB. Still running for the moment. Going to run out soon. Charge through by Non Grada. Curse Crown is on him. Gonna keep on chasing forward. Silent, just throwing them away with that Radiance Burn. Looks on the King R next. He will go for the TP out and be successful. The Terrorize will be held. It's not needed. Dream will TP out as well. 
Maiden will probably not be so lucky because he's in range of that Radiance Burn. He'll go for the TP now. But there's the charge and there's the death. Well, Draskul, did they convince you of something? I mean, they got the Aegis off the of Sark, which is great. They killed the Doom, which is also great. He used but the that Doom. Fight, that fight kind of illustrates my point. They had an active shrine. They were fighting yeah. in one of the best possible situations where they had the high ground advantage. And they knew that when Strike didn't, or excuse me, they knew that Empire didn't have vision up that hill. And they only got one kill. Like, Despite one actual kill. And remember, <laughs> Willow was there late as well, right? Yeah. I suppose they didn't uh, Medusa ulti, so... Yeah, I don't know. I'm just not sold. I think that it's way easier to play Empire's lineup right now. I'm not saying, again, like it's completely impossible or anything. Like, Kumak could just pop off during a fight, get a great stone gauge, and just kill everyone. That's always a thing when you have a Medusa. It's just, just easy think to it's so use, hard, basically. Yeah, it's, it's so hard for, for Windstrike to oh, play right now. They're trying to execute Dream right now. That's going to come out. Can they do enough here? They got yeah, the Never Strike. Yeah, yeah. They have got the Never Strike as well. There it is. Pushes him back, forced out the Shadow Dance. Reinforcements are on the way, but slowly. They might commit. More coming in. The entirety of Windstrike are here and ready to fight. They can at least get the Tier 1 tower out of this, and I doubt Empire will look to defend it. Not without the Shadow yeah, They have Rock, but no, no Doom and... Uh... No Bedlam at the moment. No Ember either. He's busy pushing out. He'll move across now, but... They accepted that that tower had to go down. So it's just Lil in this smoke right now, as they used it originally to get across quicker. And Empire just, by the time, just back away and say, okay, you know, we're in this scenario where we're farming a lot better. We mentioned it before, the net worth's even, but when you look at the spread of gold, you know, Windstrike are really relying on two individuals, whereas Empire are getting to the stage where they'll have four they can rely on. Yeah, and that point is kind of why I was emphasizing the fact that both of their cores are pretty much just countered by Empire's cores. So when you have a large amount of net worth on a hero that's going to be doomed pretty much exclusively, uh, it makes it a lot harder for that hero to make that net worth do anything, obviously. Because he can't cast spells, can't use items, you're just basically running around going, oh, well, I, I hope I live through this, you know. So that being said, there is a point in this game where I feel like it does turn back for uh, Windstrike. Dream? So I have to hold that thought. They're going in again. They decide against it though. Uh oh, a dreams something else. I mean, you can't you can't purge a, yeah. a bulldoze spear breaker. That guy is walking away. You can't stop him. I mean, you can um, purge him. It's just not a good idea. Yeah. So the the dynamic of this game is going to be if the supports of Wind Strike can get like four staffs and go scepters and stuff to to deal with the Slark. And then it suddenly becomes a kiting game where you can have the Slark's BKB eventually wore off. Because if the fight lasts long enough and you hit him with like two Mystic Snakes and he's out of mana, Slark is very similar to like an Anti-Mage where if he's out of mana, he's basically just dead. So there is a point where that happens. Speaking of Slark, they're smoking. Around the back, Rock gets dropped, Doom thrown out straight away. And now they're looking on the Dark to get rid of him, but Soulbind linking them together. BKBs are up, a main is already in half HP. Dream finding the Kumin. Kumin run out of mana fast. He needs to do a lot more damage to scare them away. Instead, he'll be the one overwhelmed by that damage. Moving in by Kodos with the Remnant. Nongrada needs to charge out of this. We'll look to make his escape across onto the Willow. But he's already hit up by the Cursed Crown. He knows he's going to die. No fear in the tree line being chased down by Dream alone. Zero Chase links two together. Silent gets the Rage off, chasing in the Dream right now. Pounces away, be able to escape Dark Seer getting too low. Wolf though. And Nongrada looking to charge across. They find the kill in the slot, but they've given a lot for this. Can they get anyone out? Silent is still looking healthy, but everyone around him is just falling so quickly. Remnant in, cleans up another kill, and all that was left is this poor little life steal. He has to fight four versus one right now. Maiden not winning that fight with him, but he goes to the TP out with the rage. Luckily, four win strike though. Roche cannot be up for at least another two minutes. They'll be thankful for that at least, so they don't lose any objective off the back of this. But another yeah, big that, loss. That pounce from the Slark is super unfortunate. He actually trapped himself <laughs> when he pounced to the left. And if you look at the, the far left side of the map on top, there's two OBS wards. So there's one from each team, which also means that there was no way that uh, Dream was ever going to be able to get any sort of regeneration. So in a lot of ways, that like positioning in the fight was good for Windstrike just because you know, they, there's no way he expects to, to be seen there. Uh, rune fight over bottom. Looks like Silent's gonna get the click. Uh, mistakes may be made by Kodos, though. The vacuum is slowing down. Forget the Phantom okay. Sprays. That was closer than it would have seemed, though, as the Inkswell was about to go pop. Yeah. They might a couple of interesting uh, okay, points about that last fight. They're, the Doom was actually on the Darkseer. Yes. And they just killed the Medusa because Kuman doesn't have a BKB against a Diffusal Blade, and he also doesn't have a Butterfly. 
which means as soon as Dream goes on him, he gets his mana burn crazy fast because he's taking bonus damage from the Diffusal Blade, obviously, and then the mana burn uh, off of itself. And he could not get his ult off. Like, he's, he had a 20 charge stick. He tried to stick and, like, insta ulti, but he just couldn't even cast it. So that being said, uh, it might be time to contemplate. See, this is the tricky thing. Is like, if he gets a BKB now, he actually just doesn't do that much damage. And he's going back for a Scotty to make himself just that much more tanky, which I still think that, that Scotty is a good item on Dusa, even with the slow nerf. In, in a situation such as his, where he does need to be able to live for long periods of time. Yeah. Um, but it's kind of... It's showing Windstrike's weakness, is that if the Medusa doesn't get the hit, then you don't win. They're gonna look to hit now. They see Maiden in the tree line with the charge coming through right now. They're forced off and in. There's the charge, tries to leak away, but they find him. Now they never strike, just bash him back towards Silent. BKB activated, though, will be able to retreat. He has got the Link Zone as well, so they can't do anything to him. Our people comes out, non grata. Trying to escape, has the Glimmer Cape. The wall goes down to protect him as well with Surge. They'll get him out, but they've just used the wall for nothing, really. At least Medusa will get the tier two. A lot of damage. Call that a, a tactical retreat wall. Just, just uh, run away. You can't cross this line if you're uh, if you're Empire. Just trying to keep people out and do uh, do anything more with it. That's another tower nice. gone. That makes it actually a lot harder now for Empire to respond to Roches because obviously if they lose two individuals. They don't have a second TP point now. Yeah, it does matter a little bit. Uh, the shrine's obviously like the best. To have alive, and I don't think that Windstrike are going to be looking at a tier three until they have a Roche, if they can even get one. And I assume that's most likely. We we could see a smoke a little bit before that. We could see a fight at Roche. Um, that's going to be the next big point of contention, I would imagine. Uh, let's see. Scotty finished now on Kuman, so he's working his way towards a butterfly. AC up on Silent. A lot more effective uh, attack speed to Kuman. I love Dream's itemization in this game, by the way. I think that pretty much every single item that he's purchased so far has been correct. And he's even buying it, like, preemptively. It's really good against the Hallbird because it, it can help you bypass the evasion, and then understanding that Kuman will most likely end up going for a Butterfly at this stage in the game just due to his other items because it's, like, one of his largest damage and effective health boosters, especially against Diffusal Blade, when you know, like, if the Sark doesn't add MKB, for example, it's uh -oh. really good if you don't want to buy BKB. It's wrap around. I'm not sure if they want to find Kuma first. The thing, though, the fuse was there, but the man to dodge it out. Charge comes through on the Dream. He needs to retreat right now. Fans race there, but the rock! No! Oh. The curse hit so hard! And with the bonds out as well. Looking forward, no fear's gonna go down. The Doom goes out a little once more. They're trying to turn around. The two cores are standing together. The Stone Gaze comes out. The Chisama there. Spark looks to escape. Non Grana just making a big mess in the middle of the fight, though. Kodos trying to get away. Remnants up to the high ground. Super low will fall, though. And now, Spirit Breaker gives his life for the cause. Shadow Dance does come out. Silent getting pretty low here. Needs to back up a little bit, but so does Dream. Gets hit up by the Scotty once, but we'll purge it off. Beautifully done by Warlock, but in the end, all they get for that is two kills, and they still lose their Ember. Yeah, that looked like it was going to be a lot worse than it was in actuality for Windstrike. Their heroes are, are quite tanky. They did not end up losing the, the Spirit Breaker and the Dark Seer, but it could have been a heck of a lot worse. Let's just put it that way. Unfortunately... Uh, Roshan's not up yet. They are looking for a little bit of a commitment here on Empire. Dream's not going to be able to find what he wants, though. And this is kind of what I was talking about, just in regards to the fights lasting longer. Like, it sounds weird against a Slark that you actually want the fight to be going for a long time. But the only reason it's like that this game is because the Doom is going to be off by that point. You assume that the, the Golem or the, the Fatal Bonds are going to be off as well. And Lifestealer and Medusa are quite good at sustaining in fights. Like, they're very, very tanky heroes. So if you run that guy out of mana by hitting him with a snake and you don't have any big ultimates left on Empire, it's still pretty heavy lifting for a Slark to go through two cores basically, you know, solo. Because the, the Ember died very early on in the fight. So if it keeps happening that way, there is a, a chance that, that Windstrike can walk away with these uh, team fight wins. Yep, that's true. When, when you think about it, Windstrike, they have these tanky individuals. Was Empire, they rely on their front lines to be elusive. If they get caught committing too hard, they can easily go down. Now, Dream, waiting around the back here. Ember is back up. They need to interrupt this somehow. The up people is there. Terrorize being charged up. Held on to charge on the backline slot. He may be overextended. The Never Strike's coming out. The Inks well as well. And the Sun's there. Pulls out the BKB. Non Grant's going to back away. The Stone Gate's being used. The wall's down as well. BKB on main allow him to run away. No Doom for 25 seconds, though. Silence Rage will run out, but they're looking forward on the maid and they're slowing down a little bit. And now the charge coming through. They're surging forward, looking onto this. Going to bash up. It's under one, gets rooted up though, the terrorized being charged up, throw now after the Soulbind connects them. 
Now gonna chase for Silent. Looking forward onto this. Has the race to get off that cursed crown. Now looking on the maiden. Has the gloom cape to protect him for the moment, but they do see it. They get the dust out onto BKB getting activated by non-grata charge it for you. Really wants the Doom Kill before he gets ultimate off and King R just being ignored with the upheaval there the whole time. Dreaming game super low, but they can't finish off the start. The backing back. Beautifully Ooh. done. Eldis comes out and save oh, pretty early, Dream. One hit from death, but protected once more by the Glimmer Cape. Silent chasing him with the open wounds there. The Rage is well gonna chase him once the killer will get it. 95 seconds on the sideline, no buyback for Slark. Charge in, non grata Decides that's a little bit too deep. He needs to get out, but now he's rooted up. Kodos says, okay, if you want to be greedy, you'll pay a price for it. He will go down, but this is still a big opportunity for Windstrike to maybe go and Roche. They could actually Rax and Roche. Like, if they knew that there was no buyback, I think they... Well, I suppose the Rock is up now. Maybe they're, maybe Roche is the correct player here. Yeah, I think it is. But that, that just showcased, like, exactly what I was saying. The Slark got hit by Snake. He ran out of mana. And he oh, died. The Rock does just get dropped on the tomb here. The people, they really don't want to give this Roche over. The problem is that Rock is basically wasted and King R is almost dying just because of the split arrows. Remnant in. Steel. Try and go for it. Terrorize oh, no, Bob. No, he he the keys. The Terrorize is way too late. They won't be able to get him. And instead, they just help Windstrike realize where safety is as they walk straight back towards their forest. Oh, man. That was unfortunate. I thought at first he was going to Remnant in to try to, like, Remnant to steal it, but... He was scared. It yeah, he was really scared. Like, he doesn't have buy... He's so far away from buyback because I think he'd already bought the Ags components before he began that. He does now have the Ags up on online. And I guess his his thought process now is, I've got to play like a Storm Spirit level 25. I've just got to buy time. Yeah, this game just got really, really rough for Empire. Like, the BKB on Slark is only five seconds now. Five seconds is not a lot of time when you have, like, these types of heroes to deal with. And now, like, there's a Glimmer... On the Grimstroke, the Spirit Breaker has BKB, the Dark Seer's got Greaves. Like, there's not really an easy target for you right now to just go in and get your quick freebie, right? And a lot of the times, if Slark can't find that, that hero that he's able to just get on and kill, the game becomes very, very tough. I would say there was probably like a 10 to 15 minute window this game where Empire felt very, very strong in the fights. And that time has kind of come and gone. So, like, their, their timing for when I think they wanted to be able to win the game is kind of over now. Well, we'll see what they can do as Windstrike move up to the high ground. Silent Rage is pretty early because the upheaval was down. They'll be able to get the tower. They're thinking about hanging around for more. The next creep wave is coming in and Kuman feeling pretty tanky right now. Has got the cheese. The Aegis is the crossing life stealer. They refuse to leave. Good reason. They are feeling an optimal peak strength right now. Forcing out the glyph. They're trying to smoke and rotate around the back. Warlock and Doom getting ready to backstab this. They could hit Medusa up, maybe, but the problem is with the surges. We just saw it's an easy escape at all times. Slark run out of mana. BKB jump in. There's Doom coming out. Terrorize for up as well. Connects on the turn. The Soulbinder to try and protect them. But mainly with the BKB actually stands his ground. It looks like Medusa might go down here. The Abyssal vacuum in. Wall doing a lot of damage here. Now Lil, it's up to you. Can you do more than just carry that for additional piece, Maiden? Gets backed up. Getting pretty low. Wall goes down. The buyback comes out from Medusa. They're chasing the board. Linkers gets popped. Kodos looking to full retreat. Still doesn't have level 25, so it's not like he can spam remnants like there's no tomorrow. Stun coming out in silent. Has got the rage though, so you can just purge it off and keep hitting onto the buildings. You kill the Medusa, but you commit everything for that one kill. Now what do you do? Get disarmed. That's what we can do. Slark will pounce away. They give up a lane and they'll give up a lot more as Cumin still has that cheese to work with after the buyback. The only way you can do this is if you somehow kill Medusa the second time and don't lose two heroes plus in the process. Yeah, I don't know. They have the uh they have Bedlam, but I don't think the Willow really wants to go in right now. It's, it's not going to do enough damage to get a kill. They're going to lose another melee Rax here. They're all Range going to be going on as well. It's yeah, going to be a flip of, of full Megas at this rate. There is someone outside the base, though. DD on Dream. This could be the Dream. Pounces in, misses the original target. Lil gets through it on them. Now the fail falls to the Rock as well. They're going to fight both the support straight away. Terrorize the scale away. Stone Gaze down, try and protect themselves. Slark is super low, needs to get the Shadow Arts, gets off in time, turns around the BKB. Looking on Akuman. Can he do enough damage here? The cheese is still available. It's a problem, but he's stacking up all those essences. The focus of this fight is entirely on Slark, and the damage is enough. Akuman is down. Moving away. Dream goes down to the Never Strike, but fights back straight away. Non Grata with the BKB. Just trying to retreat, but trying to take C with him. He realizes he will fall for this. Gets hit up with Slight Fist, and he's dead. Now Silent, no mana to work with. Has got second life, though. He needs some reinforcements, but no one's willing to commit. Lil is waiting in the river. There's a search to get him out. Just in time for the runes. Kind of grease to heal them up. Curse Crown comes out. Lil gives his life very willingly for the cause as Silent gets away and gets two bounty runes alongside it. Remnants in. All right, Kodos won't find it. Even if he had caught him, his team was so far away that I don't think they would have been able to follow it up. 
That DD room, man. Holy cow. We've that seen was... it so often. DD's deciding outcomes to games. Now, this game is not decided in favor of Empire at all, but they have found a lifeline. Yeah, I think there's actually no way they, they can fight like that if they don't have a DD. They might actually get racks off this because Medusa is, is dead for 70. She bought back previously. Well, they still have an, an Aegis on silent for... I don't know exactly how long. Okay, Russian Navy spawn in... Three, so that means it's got like three minutes, two and a half minutes left. So if he wants, he can just put his body in front of the tower and just like create a... Abyssal? Yeah, I think Clock. that's what he's gonna do. pretty low here. Needs to be careful. BKB comes out though. Silent needs to retreat from this. They're chasing on in. But Soulbind links them together, so they can't really make any plays just yet. Searing Chain's coming off cooldown right now on the Silent, but they don't want to commit hard onto him. They need to heal the Slark up and look to come back in. The Sega should be going down in what? 10 seconds? 15 seconds? Pretty soon. I think it's got longer than that. We'll see. Because well, it's three minutes until Roy spawns the thing. Oh. Ow. There it is. Just in time. Oh, yeah. oh no, the worst time is placed out of mana. They're going to move in right now. The Doom is down and the Life Stealer is gone. Now the Remnant fall on Spirit Breaker. He did actually get his Bulldoze out, so they can't he rush him in. He's going to need to. They're waiting for the Medusa. They want to see if they can actually bait Empire in. They know they're going to lose a lane. Will they lose more? The charge comes through. Vacuum in, there's the buyback as well. Dream looking to escape, will get out. Non Grata chase for the BKB and they'll turn around onto Kodos and wail on him. He goes down. He does have buyback though. Can they find this lock? No, they can't. He gets away as Cumin goes scouting for him. So Empire. I mean, Empire are losing tier fours in their base. They got some card issues down here. Oof. My card issues usually involve techies players, but these guys got problems with creeps. You and everyone else, you know? <laughs> That's all he does. Yeah, this is a. Uh... This is a very, very close game. I I kind of got to a point where I thought that Empire's lineup kind of just had passed the speak, and to a certain extent, that's still true. It's just sometimes runes can be the, the great equalizer. <laughs> well, 30 seconds till another rune appears. Well, two runes, in fact. So, so maybe, maybe just again, Dream can pull something out of nothing. Well, there's a very good chance that a DD spawns at this stage in the game. That's true. Roach will spawn in a minute and a half. Possibly. The minimum until we maybe see another one. And remember, this this will be the big one. This will be the third Roche. Someone might get lucky and get their hands on Ags, and they might just get a second spell round to cast. Probably, do you give to like Lil in this type of game with your win strike, or do you just go double Soulbind? Uh, let's see. There's not really a whole lot of stuff to partner with a Soulbind. I guess that's my biggest... Hmm. Maybe life is like... No but then what does he take out? Midas maybe, and then you got like double Abyssal, Disarm, and Rage? I think you probably just give it to Dusa for double Stone Gaze. That's fair. Yeah, double Stone Gaze is actually so strong because the Slark wants to be in the fight and hit. Like you mentioned that they are elusive cores and that's that's true. Like they can get in and out of the fights very quickly, but at the same time, Slark would like nothing more than to be able to just sit there with a BKB on and just attack. Because that just means Essence Shift stacks. The longer he's stacking, the more dangerous he becomes, but... If you have two stone gazes, you could just mega them before they're able to do anything, right? Yeah. The only other thing I could think of maybe is double never strike if non Grata gets his ags in time, right? Like, That's crazy, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> it would be hilarious to see, don't get me wrong. I love to see it. It would just be him playing ping pong with himself, basically. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's unlikely that we see it is the problem. I mean, he would have double BKB, so he's like built himself some value as the candidate. I'm not sure it's enough, though. I think you're right. Like, stone, double Stone Gaze plus that Mana Steel, that's pretty hefty. Especially when we yeah. keep talking about Slark relying on that Mana Pool so much. Well, that's why he dies in the fights. He either runs out of Mana or he runs out of cooldowns. Like, once his ult and his BKB are off, it becomes very difficult for him to exist in the fight. Like, he only has to get hit by two Snakes, and then he's done. Like, he's got nothing nothing left in the tank he doesn't have a stick or anything which is like during the mid game what you use to sustain if you do accidentally get hit by a snake but when they were getting chased like all the way across the map that's the only reason he died is because he ran out of mana couldn't pounce couldn't purge himself and then you know he falls over silent dove him to freaking tier fours because he's like oh god he's out of mana i'm killing this guy um but yeah i mean we we did speak a, a little bit about it during the draft and like the medusa functionality against slark i think that Empire more than anything else. Like they were they were forced to use their ultimates in a defensive manner, I think, too many times. Because if you look at the way that the game had gone, most of the time that we saw rocks drop, it was Windstrike who were the aggressors, right? They were pushing past the river, 
they were dropping golems, they were using all these spells, but they weren't really getting their own objectives out of it. They were just protecting their own side of the map. And that's something really key in games like this, where you are fighting against a team that is cooldown driven to a certain extent on Empire, because if Doom and the, the Warlock ulti are down, your team fight kind of sucks. Like, it's just not that good. You got to do a lot of poking, and like with the Ember and the Fatal Bonds and stuff, and you're not particularly good at hitting towers either. So what happens when both of your cores can't hit towers, and then you're always forced to offering to defend your own side of the map. When do you ever have time to push? And I think that's kind of the issue that Empire ran into this game. Well, that's a fair point. Although there is always this turnaround point when you get this late into the game where, you know, the buybacks are what matters. And if you can force one slip up, it doesn't matter how slow your lineup appears at hitting towers. Like your damage is high enough and your enemies are dead long enough that you can make a difference. Maybe the difference ends up being Willow. I mean, he's got that Ags online now, which could be definitive. I mean, if you could actually get that full duration off attack in the Medusa and she dies quick enough. Does it feel like Wind Strike's lineup falls apart without the Medusa still? Or is Lifesteal a big enough to carry this? Oh, it definitely gets tricky without Medusa. No question. But I, I kind of see where you're coming from. He needs a little 25 though. Like say you needs the attack speed if he really yeah. wants that that Aghanims to pop off. So he's got what half of a level, so that's like twelve hundred ish or something EXP I think for for that level. It's getting fairly close, yeah. Um but yeah, if he can get it, and then, you know, he starts sitting in the back and just wailing on people, it is a, a huge amount of damage. Like, there's there's no question. He's even going for Moonshard, too. He's got the Tome in his quick buy. It's going to be up in 30 seconds. And then if he gets the the Moonshard as well, then yeah, he, he becomes kind of like... I call it the, the Ghetto Enchantress, where if you're, if you're Enchantress and you hit that fast, you murder everyone because you can't BKB your damage, but you can still, like, magic immune the, the Shadow Run. Oh, it's a fair, it's a fair way of looking at it. I think they did they tweak it recently because it was. I don't think they have actually. I haven't changed it yet. A lot of people were expecting it to get changed, just because of how strong the, it seems to be. The ags for uh, Willow. Oh, for Willow. I I find it a very strange item because the way that Willow plays the game, at least from my perspective, and again, this is limited experience because I don't play the hero often, is that you really don't want to build the agonims very early in any game. Like, look at his items. He bought that Aghanims after Blink, after having a gem, an Aeon Disc, and a Yules. So he bought it fourth in a game that's almost 50 minutes in, right? Yeah. So obviously it has its uses in terms of damage output, but it's definitely not something that you would want to prioritize. So in my opinion, if the item is that way on the hero and you build it that late, it's not OP. Because if it was truly OP, you'd build it first every game, and there would never be a reason to build anything else. So... That, that's kind of how I view all balance in Dota, is that if there's something that you do every game, it's probably too good. Well, that's, that's fair. And also, you know, between that and some people say, oh, maybe the problem is the attack speed at level 25. In fairness, these level 25 talents are designed to expedite the game. It was designed to deal with these kind of two-hour stalemates. Dream? Oh, he's gone straight in. No fear's dead. All right. Just a freebie. He's got that moon shard, super attack speed. Wanted to, it I won't help them lose. that much, though, because Roche is still not going to be up for over a minute. So, Wind Strike will have five available. I think it's important to always be able to, like, get those sort of posturing kills, though, before Roshan spawns. Because that means that it's going to take longer for the enemy team to set up. Now, even with that kill, Empire is still at a bit of a disadvantage because they don't have shrines. And uh, they have not taken... Well, they did take the Tier 3, but they haven't taken the shrines yet. So okay. they still need to... Uh, to well, make that happen. They don't want to make that happen. They want to make a kill happen on Salem right now. Let's smoke rotate around the back. Or just try and find someone protecting him. The problem is when striking out on the high ground. He maybe forced a buyback, but what happens next? Let's scout out. Pop the Lincolns. There's the rage. Oh, Root comes out. Rock, oh, Rock no. just under one. BKB even on Grotto protect him. Now the Neverstrike trying to turn the road around. This is going to be a wall down. Now the Stone Gaze as well. Kuman protecting his own BKB. Non Grotto trying to retreat. We are to escape. And Lifesteal is standing in the mix. Gets hit up by the Doom and the Fear. Running away from the Terrorized Nafi. He'll just slow him down. But they're still linked together by the Soul Bind. The charge through. Non Grotto looking on a dream. Slark getting pretty low. He can't escape this. No. He's going to go down. The Remnant comes out from Kodos to look to escape. Trying to finish off Lifesteal. He might get him. It's going to be close to Final Tick, does it? But Kodos, can he escape himself? No remnant for 10 seconds to charge in. Nice use of the Seer and Chains, though. And the Bramble Maze to cover the escape. They don't have a charge. They couldn't get in range from the Never Strike. So one for one trade. And both the big cores missing for almost two minutes. And only one. Man, I can't, uh, I can't believe he actually just stood in there for that one. Like, I thought he was going to try to disengage on Dream at some point. But no, he was just committed. He's like, nope, I'm, 
I'm either dying or we're killing them all. And that's basically how this one's going to go. I mean, it was surprising. And they committed so hard for the life stealer, right? I thought maybe they weren't going to use the upheaval and just try and have him run away, right? Because then the Medusa's alone. But Kuman got everything off. BKB, Stone Gaze, there was nothing stopping him. Honestly, in those types of fights, his itemization is actually a problem. Because if you get to tee off like that, you don't want this many defensive items. Obviously, like, that's not his fault. He knows that the Slark is kind of chasing him a lot of the game. Oh, uh, they chase the save. Moving in, blinking away, won't so do much. Wow. Yules, just in time. I can't believe he got that off. Uh, are you really going to stand here and attack him like this? It's brave. He'll get away I mean, with he's it. He's owning him. Kodos is here. Non Grata's maybe not for long. The BKB's there so he can escape. And the Glimmer Cape to protect him will look to charge away. Hits Maiden on the way through, but no, the root. Connects on him, Ink Swell. Groomstroke tries to protect him, but instead he might just die alongside him. Non Grata has nowhere to run and nowhere to hide. Because, well. It turns out Empire is the thing that goes bump in the night. Yeah. They, force they don't have buyback. Back. The, the Grimstroke and uh, Silent can't get back into the game. It's true. Can they do it the quick enough though? Without... That's the thing, like you've got an Ember, not really a guy known for his Roche taking speed, even with this build. Yeah, and there's no like Solar Crest or anything, or even a Medallion on the side of Empire, so yeah, they're not going to be able to go for it. This is scary territory though, Mjolnir done on uh, Seiyu, he does a lot of damage now. He's, he's one of those heroes that uh, transitions into a machine gun, more or less. Yeah. Remember when we looked at him, it was like, yeah, you know, he's just got his axe. He decided not to go for the Moonshot, but the rate at which he suddenly just got this gold influx is ridiculous. Like, this yeah. 120 GPM talent is why this kind of build is feasible as the game goes on. Oh? Yeah, I mean, his net worth is very high, even for a 54 minute game as a position four. Doing pretty well earlier on as well, but oh no no no! They they're scanning. They know Lil could go for the big vacuum play. He does have the bling dagger? You need a scout though. Silent trying to chase him. Activates the rage. He's just getting pretty low. Uh oh, he needs to back away though. The doom is available. Is the problem here? Charge through. Walls there. Rock gets dropped, but too late. Non is already in the pit. Kumu move, move forward. The BKB activate the stone gates as well, trying to scare them off. They can't stand against this for long. Maiden hit up. Now Rise comes out next on to Silent, gonna force him away. Aegis gets snatched away by Nongrana! He gets the second life dream! He's stuck in here without a second to work with. He has the refresher, but he can't get out quick enough. The Abyssal, the Bash, gonna be there. He needs to escape refreshes. Looks to pounce away. Shadow Dance going straight back in, but he's taking way too much damage here. They'll find the kill of Doom. He's dead. She's getting eaten right now. The drop gets dropped after King R dies. He'll buy back straight away in Kodos. Hanging on the high ground. How does he re engage on this though? Because there's still five members of Windstrike and Empire just been forced to burn a lot of cash and not get much in return. And Sark still has another BKB charge. If he wants to go back in, he can. He did have to pop the double Shadow Dance, though. This is the Managed problem. to preserve KB. I mean, you look at that fight, right? You see the snatch, you're like, okay, not bad for win strike. But they still got a refresh shot. The fact he had to use it just to survive? Where's your strategic advantage? The cheese got eaten as well. It's not like you got anything out of that. In fairness, win strike got the big advantage because they forced buybacks. Dream caught mid leap here. Jump in. Oh no, Dream has tacked in the BKB. If he gets smashed once though, he's dead. The Scotty might be enough in itself. I'm gonna keep slowing him. Nongra's not hitting him though. Wayne, he's got the charge. Dream gets to the tree line. Hit up by Scotty again. Oh. Now BKB even Nongra to chase the board. Kodos, what are you doing here? The abyss of the charge for he's dead. Slot gone. He, he is in a lot of trouble because he has no buyback available. One second on a Shadow Dance cooldown. His blink actually came up too during that, but he got hit by the Radiance from Silent, and it oh. broke his blink when he was in the when he was in the trees. I think he actually could have lived there if he had been like slamming his blink dagger. He's, well, that's not going to be anything to break here. It might be Empire's back that breaks completely because Windstriker in the base. The Creep Wave top is pushing in. Ember's not making any shenanigans to try and break it, but look, another DD. Maybe. It's not on this lock this time, though. I don't know if it's going to be enough. We'll have to see. Lincoln's pop, jump in, Maiden, look at the Doom, and no! Dodged by Kuman straight away, and now Doom in trouble, forced up to try and get him out. But he's taking too much damage here, the Terrorizer's trying to protect him, BKB activated, trying to escape non -Grata. infested up, Life Stealer waiting to come out, Never Strike still available, non Grata bashed him back, they're looking on Maiden, trying to get him rid of him quick enough, gonna get him low, and he's gone. No way back into this game either. 125 seconds on the sideline, non Grata gets away courtesy of the Glimmer Cape. Silent chasing in, says Tier Force go. No Doom for 120 seconds, no Slark for 40, what do they do now? They don't have the Rock available for another 30. This game might be done. Let's see if Windstrike can end it. Kodos. They don't fear him at all. They just pop his Lincolns to let him know that he's the one who should be threatened. And I feel we may see this game now come to an end. They need to make a move. No fear. Maybe the only opening target they have for the Aeon just gets propped. 
Terrorize, charged up, but Silent has the rage to protect himself. Jumping on the Kumin, but it's in a wall. Kodos is actually doing a lot more damage here. The Silence comes out on top of him, and he has no escape from this. He's dead as they end the game. Wind Strike take game one in this best of three, but it was hard fought for both sides. It was a really back and forth game. Very close. Cool drafts from both sides. Um, I did kind of favor Empire's draft for a while, but uh, we talked about it during the game a bit. They just they didn't hit the timing I think they wanted to hit. I don't really feel like Slark ever wants the game to go an hour. Like the the issue with Slark is that when the supports don't have items and the cores on the enemy team don't really do a lot of damage, that's when you are the strongest because you can just go in hit as long as you want. And, you know, you just get to basically have free reign. And we saw a couple of fights where Dream basically had that happen, especially when with DD, that was a bit later, obviously. But I think that the longer the game goes for Slark for this game, the worse. Because your mana pool, you're just never going to be able to recover it. No, Like, no one's force-feeding you mangoes in the middle of a fight. It's just not going to happen. Like, you, you can't, can't cast spells, can't play the game. And I think that's kind of what ended up happening to him two or three times in a row. And then that allows, you know, Windstrike to get these openings where they can just walk down the lane and push. Even with Kuman's build, which is probably one of the most defensive Medusa builds I've ever seen in a game. Like, he had BKB, Scotty, and Hurricane Pike together. That's three defensive items, which, you know, it ended up working out. But I'm surprised, like, itemizing that way they were able to win. But yeah, maybe for next game, just try to force it a little bit more if you're Empire. Like, flex when you have the advantage. Don't just let... Wind strike take the fight to you on your side of the map every time, especially when you have these cooldown driven heroes. Oh, it definitely seemed like they were content because you know we've got these free cores that farm route four really say we got in the mix as well. But it felt like they needed the perfect golems and and bonds every time. But as we saw, you know he had a perfect one near the Roche pit earlier on, and it done nothing. It just seemed like all the best golem plays came defensively for King R. As a result, win strike Kate, they take the first game, but unlike yesterday, the day before, we've moved past the best of ones, all right? You've got to prove yourself a little bit more. It would be a bit mean to say bye to Team Empire straight away. They get another shot. It's a best of three. Win strike needs to take the second game if they want to plow on through the wins bracket. And we're going to see if Team Empire can mix it up, if they can bring the aggression that we expect from CIS teams, or if win strike will just do what's in their name. Stay tuned. 